That's right, back at it again at Media Campus West, broadcasting live for the re-show. Shout out to Magic 107.5, Got another special guest in the building. Now that the strike is over, everybody pulling up on us, man, and we appreciate it right now. We got the man that you might know from his own actor seminars, Act Like You Know. You might know him from Family Business on Netflix. You might know him from Notorious. You might know him from just turning on your TV or going to the movies in general. We got Dennis A. White in the building. What's up, you dog? What's up, what's up? It's your boy, Dennis L.A. White in the building we here man yeah the strike is finally over that's right we can do things legally <laughs> let, me, let me find out you was gorilla shooting hey, in your basement hey, hey. don't ask don't tell you know that's, that's what they say it. in the military right that's it man tell us about uh some pivots that you were doing during the strike every uh, we interviewed a few people they had to you know come up with different things and, yeah. and, and you know get the feet where the different areas was in the podcast or did you just dive deep into trying to teach other people how to get the acting thing going man, i started my only fans page okay you know, selling this, feet you know, pics that's it there you go got it popping <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> nah, but you know what? You know, I, I've been teaching uh, my I Like You Know company for almost 15 years. So mm-hmm. um, this was a perfect time for actors to get their skills up mm-hmm. in the midst of the of the strike. Uh-huh. So I did a lot of teaching, uh, a lot of writing and, and you know, pre-production for projects that I'm shooting. I'm um, directing. I wrote and directed and directing a movie that we're shooting in Fayetteville, North Carolina. OK. And in, um, in March. So just really getting that into in, in order and it was kind of a good time for the industry so you can regroup and kind of just get a different focus kind of focus on what you're doing a little more yeah. whether you wanted to be behind or in front of the camera or a mix of both yeah I, i've been going back and forth for uh-huh. a while but it's just it was a good time man you know um i didn't shoot any projects there you go during the strike <laughs> <laughs> let's be clear here <laughs> i was not filming doing the strike but you know you know it was crazy because we had projects that popped out popped off during the strike that mm-hmm. we couldn't really promote. Gotcha. You know, uh, the, yeah. the movie The Past that I did with Todd um, Tucker and Candy Burris mm-hmm. uh, on Peacock was like the number one movie on there, but we couldn't really promote couldn't it. Couldn't even promote it, but still hit number one. Shout yeah. out to Candy and Todd. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. <laughs> That's fam. Right. How did how did you get um, involved with that situation? You know, I've been knowing them for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a minute, almost 10 years. Yeah. And wow. so maybe longer, you know, just running in New York and stuff. Uh-huh. That's why I knew Todd and then me and Candy just, you know, being around. And so um, that movie is cool because it's a bunch of friends. Like mm-hmm. everybody that's in the, in the project, we all knew each other previously. Okay. So it wasn't like we was on set, you know, trying to act like we were all friends. <laughs> we right. Families. You actually knew each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, it made a good energy. And so he just brought his friends together and, and um, I think we did a good job. That's what's up, man. That's definitely what's up. So tell me about um, how did you get in started in the industry? Because you've been doing it for a minute. You yeah. know what I mean? You got from L.A. Then you start to, you know, pop off in the industry. Like what what gave you that bug, that acting bug? Man, I've been acting since I was a kid, doing theater and mm-hmm. plays and, you know, music and everything and sports at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, I just felt like this was something I was good at, mm. you know, and um. I think my transition really started was when I moved to DC Mm -hmm. and I was really heavy in in the theater and doing a lot of different things. And I saw like, you know what? I could really, really do this. Yeah. Then moving to New York was the whole like culture shock. (laughs) You know, New York is, 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 is it's a, it's 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 like a place of its own. (laughs) Cause I'm and then you really are, you coming from California. Yeah. And then you go to Winston Salem. Yeah. Where a whole bunch of famous people done went. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you go to DC and then go to New York. So that is a big difference, a heck of a difference. Yeah, but I love New York. New York really <clears throat> taught me a lot and really made me tough and understand mm-hmm. the industry. And my big break was uh I was a host of few on few television. Mm-hmm. I was the first first black, black host. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I brought the melanin in, you know. There you go. <laughs> Open the door. It was tough, bro. It was tough. <laughs> yeah. But it was cool because mm-hmm. I got a chance to really connect with a lot of celebrities, a mm-hmm. lot of music artists, and just kind of get my feet wet in the industry. Right. And then the movie The Brave One was the one that really introduced me to Hollywood. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's it's a I tell people like there's steps that you take. Yeah. And everyone has different steps and it's not like an overnight situation. You just gotta just survive with the fittest. Yeah, like that overnight ten year success. So yeah. you ten years ten and people years like, oh overnight. you, oh they don't put you on. Like I actually been doing this for a minute. Yeah, for real, for real. You just didn't know about me. <laughs> right, right, right. Because you had songs released on Billboard and everything. Yeah. And then uh, how did you actually get to that position to do to do the fuse situation? Man, also real tip. 
I was walking down the street minding my own business. Word. And this shorty, <laughs> this little white girl was like, yo, we want you to audition for something. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So uh-huh. I went upstairs to this little uh, room uh-huh. and I auditioned. I, I rapped. Mm-hmm. I sung. If I only had a brain, you uh-huh. know, I was just on some really like whatever. And right. they liked me. So I wow. came back and auditioned. And the big, the next audition was like thousands of people in waiting in line. Okay, so I'm like, oh, this is serious. Yeah, you had no idea. Somebody no. just saying, hey, come off the street and audition. Did you know what it was for, or they just told you nah. wanted you to audition? But I, you know, I was a, so I had my headshots with yeah. me at all times. You was, I was prepared. From, yeah, I that's was, the nugget for the day. Be prepared. prepared. Stay ready. <laughs> but you know, I was like, I could take her and whoever was with her. So right, I right, wasn't right. really scared on that aspect. <laughs> it was a professional building, but right. it was it was when I saw the thousands of people auditioning mm-hmm. and. I saw the magnitude of it and they really showed me love and I went and auditioned and they didn't give it to me. Yeah. And then they called me back because they wanted me to the uh, screen test. And then I got it and I was yeah. like, oh, this wow. is like TRL. Like yeah. we, we on every day, live mm-hmm. TV, millions of viewers daily, yeah. studio audience, you know, from interviewing from Marilyn Manson to Eminem to yeah. 50 Cent to Bust. It was crazy. And you got to interview all these people, but Little did they know. They knew, but they didn't really know. You were an aspiring musician at the same time as an actor. So now you're in a room with all these artists, but you're in control. Like, you're kind of maneuvering everything. I just knew what my job was. Mm. And so it wasn't like, yo, please listen to my demo. Like, I wasn't, like, doing that because that's not what my criteria was at the moment. And so a lot of those people we became friends. Yeah. Like Ludacris. That's how I met Ludacris. And we're still real cool to this day. Him, Shaka, yeah. and Jeff, all them, you know, a that's lot of people. Up. So, uh, I built a lot of relationships, Yeah, you know, and that's what this business is partly about. Yeah, definitely, man. And that's, uh, uh when I always say success is relative. Yeah. So you want to be an artist and you got a, you got dreams saying, okay, I'm gonna work with this person, work with that mm-hmm. person. And then you end up hosting shows with all these people and you are in control of the microphone. You interviewing these yeah. guys, you debuting their music and now you're building those relationships. So your success, uh, as far as the music, then mm-hmm. come from making albums with these folks. You got lifelong bonds with these people. Yeah. That's what's yeah. up. And it, it was cool. Um, so I had an opportunity to be in a video game because of the show. Okay. Def Jam Vendetta. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I played I played the executive on the air and I beat him. And yeah. They made me a character. And so it was those things that <laughs> really helped build me and understand the business more yeah. from that aspect of it. Uh, seeing what they go through and how to handle it and, and building those relationships. How was that day to day? You do, you hosting a live TV show every day on with Fuse. Uh, how was that? Like walk us through a day of that, because I know it's a, a bit different from doing like something that's going to be post production and edited it down to like a movie. Man, it was challenging. Yeah. So, you know, I, I get there, get to the studio seven, eight o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. um, and then we go to table read. Yeah. And so we re- go through the script that they prepared and we're editing it. And then I go do research. Uh-huh. I got a couple hours of our research and I go to the gym and come back. And then I got to go through a wardrobe situation to figure out what I'm going to wear. Uh-huh. Then I got to go do an hour or two listening to the artist's music. Yeah. So I kind of understand who where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we are on set rehearsing and then we go back to the dressing room and change. Then we have the fan aspect where we got to go and sign autographs and uh-huh. take pictures and um, with the label executives and then we go and get dressed um i think our show started at six o'clock every evening so mm-hmm. um we would be on set by at 4 30 lighting rehearsing yeah. and then we live at six so when you're live mm-hmm. uh, i think it was like maybe a four five six second delay yeah um it's it's, it's there. Going. You yeah, mess it's, up, you mess up, you mess bro. Up, yeah. And you I messed up a lot. Like I was a black sheep. <laughs> I was a black dude and a black sheep of the right. show. Uh, cause reading the teleprompter and you mm-hmm. got your host, mm-hmm. your your um, person in your ear, somebody in your ear, yeah. you got the studio audience, you got you know, it's just a lot, but it was wonderful. Yeah. It, the adrenaline was crazy and, and I learned a lot and it, it stepped up my game. That's what's up. And most times people watching don't even realize you messed up. You just know it. Oh yeah. But you gotta oh. have a goldfish memory, like I forget about it now to the next thing. Keep going on. <laughs> they in my ear, did it. Oh, hey. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's what's up. But you definitely made history with that being the first African American host. Black yeah. man hosts on Fuse, for Fuse TV doing a live show. You killed that, yeah. obviously. Yeah, did some great things, did some great numbers, and then you say, "Okay, I'm gonna pivot." So, what was the next move right after that? So, 
I left there and I was supposed to do this TV series, which didn't culminate. We did like a couple episodes. Uh-huh. So um, I did. What did I do after that? I think I did Weekend Vibe. Mm. I started hosting on Weekend Vibe. Yeah. And uh, that was cool, too, because it was, you know, Vibe Magazine yeah. TV show. And we we did a lot of I interviewed Will Smith for when he did Hitch. Yeah. And um, he spit on me and everything. And wait, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. With all the stuff going on, you can't just say that without ex- explaining. It was unintentional, <laughs> but he spit on me. I'm like, yo, man, I'll put this on eBay. But, you know, <laughs> but, you. so it was cool. You know, I, I did a lot of that. And then um, then the Brave one. Yeah. And I had opportunity. That was with Jody Foster. Uh-huh. And um, I just went and auditioned and, and I knew I had to do this. Because mm-hmm. I knew like the hosting was fun. It's yeah. cool. Yeah. But that wasn't my my end all to be all. Yeah. And so when I booked that, that was my first studio film, and that just kind of opened up the doors for all the other projects from mm-hmm. Notorious. Yeah. For me to be able to ha- happen to do that film, so it was it was a door opener, right? There, for sure. That's crazy, man. To start off in music and then go. Well, I know you've been active since yeah. you were a kid, but really, you got your feet wet in the music industry. Yeah. Had your stuff together, get that opportunity to host, and then you move on and start working on Notorious, which is one of the most iconic hip hop figures of all time. But yeah. you're in this movie as one of his homies yeah how was that oh man it was it was surreal mm. because i lived in brooklyn at the time that's so. crazy hold up me die bell for that <laughs> playing in notorious living in brooklyn at the time crazy brooklyn. <laughs> talk to me man yeah man so living there and and getting an opportunity to audition um there was another actor really great actor who they had slated for the role mm-hmm. but they wanted something different and i obviously brought something different got you and so um I, I did like five to seven auditions, mm-hmm. callbacks. Yeah. They kept bringing me in and I kept knocking them down. And um, it's funny, I got the call and I, I was telling my agent before, like, yo, this, they doing this Biggie movie. I want to be in it. And they, they dropped the ball. <laughs> um, they the agent dropped me. the ball? They dropped oh, the ball. Oh, man. So They're when, not going to be in a Netflix series oh, of your life. Oh, man, never, <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever. So when they gave me the call that I booked the role, <clears throat> uh-huh. The next day, my agent submitted me for the movie as Diddy. I'm like, I don't even look doing? like Diddy. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, I had to fire them. Right. And they were like, you need to talk to your client. So, you know, sometimes we let people control our destinies. Right. And sometimes we got to like, look, I'm going through this going regardless. Yes. Yeah. How did you get to the audition space? Because your agent, obviously, they didn't get you there. So how how did that come about? Man, I was at my acting coach. Shout out to Tracy. Um Tracy, I don't mm-hmm. want to say her last name. I got you. But uh, <laughs> my acting coach, um, I just stopped by her class mm. and the casting directors were there. Wow. Just, and so me and Twinkie Bird, mm-hmm. who was the casting director, we kind of got into an argument. <laughs> I'm like, yo, I need to audition. <laughs> ah, yeah. It was right. like we was going back and forth. Uh-huh. And she's like, All right, I'm going to give you a chance. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. I ain't believe her. Mm-hmm. And they called me. And wow. so now I was like, oh, snap. OK, and I got to get I got to get <laughs> serious again. <laughs> but it was cool uh, when I when I got there, mm-hmm. um, the girl that played Jan in the movie, yeah. I knew her from Howard. I was in Howard's touring company. Mm-hmm. Um, me, her, Chad with Bozeman, R.I.P. my homie. Um, right. So we all kind of was in the same kind of realm. So when I mm-hmm. saw her, it was a connection and we bonded. Yeah. And that helped me give me the that gave me that strength to go in that room and knock it out. Man, that's amazing, man. That's a dope story. While you were on set, were anybody from the act, like, was C's there, Kim, Diddy, were, were any of them on set frequently? Well, little Kim was definitely not there. <laughs> right. <laughs> there was a lot of issues lot with her of, and, okay. and the film, so she was not there. <laughs> I love Kim. That's my that's my sis, but she wasn't there. Little C's was there mm-hmm. damn near every day, and he always... He was there. He helped me out. Okay. He helped me because you playing an actual person, so yeah. he had he and he knows him. So yeah. and D Rock was locked up for you know he was locked up for the whole uh, mm-hmm. High Nine Seven shootout. Yeah. So I couldn't really talk to him directly. Mm-hmm. So Lil C's was there every day, chopped it up with me. Right. Um, took me underneath his wings. Um, uh, Mrs. Wallace was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was there all the time when we shot in in New York, but wow. she didn't come to the shooting in L.A. I, I understandable. Yeah, yeah, she couldn't do it. That's a lot emotionally oh. to deal with. Lost her son out there. Still yeah. some some a lot of trauma going on. Of with course. That. And we right. shot exactly in the spot where he got killed. So, <clears throat> yeah. you know, um, but uh, Diddy was there, you know, certain times. Diddy wasn't like day in, day out, uh-huh. which I was surprised. He yeah. was there when he needed to be there. 
Uh, Wayne Barrow, one of the producers, was there. So you know, people were coming in. Faith, yeah, was there. So it was it was kind of hands on, but enough to let the actors do what they had to do. Got you, got you, man. Any crazy stories that happened while you was on set with that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that you can say. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, maybe Let me not see that what I can say. say. <laughs> uh, yeah, when we was we were shooting in, in um in Brooklyn, some of the dudes in the hood tried to steal the whole food. Like the, <laughs> the craft is serv- craft craft service yo they yo we had like yo what y'all doing you know what i mean right so that we had that issue going on when we shot the scene in in um in la when biggie got shot uh-huh we had a uh extra who was who was in the driver's seat he wasn't yeah. supposed to drive oh okay and so i'm i'm getting in the car he drives off i'm hanging out the car almost die yo, wow. it was crazy he got fired on the spot like i it bet was, he did yeah i almost lost my life that's I almost crazy. lost my life for the movie that's nuts you see we'll see what actors go through <laughs> <laughs> man that's wow. wild man and then fast forward it uh you start doing different projects and moving yeah. through the industry um talk to me about that a little bit like moving from from these sitcoms to more hosting because mm-hmm. it seems like sometimes we we get cast as hosts and that's what they want us to be yeah right yeah i mean you know <clears throat> i feel like this the goal of an actor is to work that's it and so my goal is to try to find projects and to keep my name my work still going on out there so mm-hmm. people can can see it and, and and remember me so i started I did this whole television run where I was doing um, um, Parenthood, mm-hmm. The Closer, and but I was always blessed to have like really strong characters. Mm-hmm. And every episode, like the, the episode I did for Parenthood was one of the highest rated episodes. Right. The episodes I did for Closer was the highest rep episodes of their whole seasons. Mm. Like so I was really blessed and I did Atlanta too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was I was just moving through the industry and just really getting my name out there. And, you know, and then the hosting always comes back. Like right. you said, I always mm-hmm. come back because I'm great at it. So, mm-hmm. you know, you just have to keep reinventing yourself and keep your head down. And you know, you never know what's gonna be the next situation. Cool. What was probably the most funnest and challenging hosting jobs you had? I could imagine it's probably the few situations was like the first one. Well, so we did Super Jam 10, I think it was Super Jam 10. Uh-huh. And we hosted it. Yeah. And it was the first time it was ever televised. So it was Eminem, 50 Cent on there. Uh-huh. Diddy was there. It was like crazy and it was raining. Uh-huh. So I'm like just you know i'm I'm a fan yeah you know of, of, of eminem yeah. and 50 cent i'm watching the show and and juggling people backstage crews fighting <laughs> you know because there's beef going on it's too. beef going on while we have a summer jam right. so you know and trying to to juggle all of that it was great though you know thousands and thousands of people out there and seeing how they reacted in the rain when 50 cent and and um came out with mini man like yeah. it shut the whole place down wow so that that's something i'll never forget that, that was one of the greatest um hosting situations uh with my wife and kids when i was at the fa- um mm-hmm. with weekend vibe we went to uh the bahamas and shot an episode with them okay and so just work you know, perks yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> getting paid to be at the bahamas at the atlantis <laughs> is crazy that's what's up but yeah th- those are perks of the industry man mm-hmm. definitely that, that's dope man talk to me about family business oh. how'd you get that netflix you could turn on netflix and catch you right now amazing that is and now that the new <laughs> you know we uh, the strike will get paid for right. it yeah okay that's awesome that's always good <laughs> always good <laughs> right. well with that we shot that as a movie mm. and so they called me like yo we got this movie we want you to be in mm-hmm. Bonk, great so we're shooting it in la um i was still living in la at the time okay and um we shot it as a movie and it was standalone and BET, BET heard about it and like we want to make it into a series okay so the very three or four episodes of the first season was the movies broken up yeah and then it just started flourishing and we put it on BET plus initially and it did well uh-huh. it did well but us moving to Netflix is took it to a whole nother level. another stratosphere yeah. yeah yeah and you know i don't want to tell t- people too much about certain things but uh it, it was fun i enjoyed i enjoyed it that's another project that was a lot of us are friends mm. that i knew 
you know, for years and we worked here like Darren Henson. That's my brother. I've been knowing him from New York. Yeah. Like uh, 20 years. Like it's just crazy. Miguel Nunez Jr. Mm -hmm. Like I've been knowing them. So um, being on set with them is not like it's work, but it's not work. I got you because you around the homies. Yeah. That's how the cameras just happen to be rolling. Just happen. You know, <laughs> and we happen to get a check. There you go. <laughs> that's always good. Die Bell for getting a check with friends. <laughs> oh, man. That's a, that's amazing stuff, bro. Man, you got a, a, a great run in the industry and it's still going. Um, tell us about some of the things you have coming up. Because since the strike is over now, you're able to get these projects up. You kind of touched on one that you're shooting in North Carolina now. I'm sure it's others. Yeah, so the one I'm shooting in, in North Carolina is called The Chronicles of Fed Nam. Mm. If you ever been to Fayetteville, North Carolina, the title we call it Fed Nam. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, Jay Cole's from there, right. a lot of other people <clears throat> from there. So it's just kind of telling some of the stories there that happens that people don't really know about. Um, I got a movie I'm shooting in January with Omar Gooding called uh, News Cycle. Okay. Um, it's crazy it's <laughs> it's really a dope 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 script so um we're shooting that next month um mickey hardaway is out which has been you know critically acclaimed mm -hmm. that's on tubi and a lot of other platforms um it's called mickey hardaway it's a black and white movie that's we shot that in la this is stupid okay. um and then my project uh clubhouse cinema um it should be out in a couple weeks um it's an interview show where we we watch uh, uh, films and we critique them celebrity guests sketch comedy is, is really cool and really different that's what's up man yeah. so you've named a lot of people not named drive you just talking about how you've yeah. been, been working with a lot of people you've been working with in the industry working mm -hmm. next to we're hearing all these wild stories about people now is it possible to work with people and then have no idea what they're doing on their free time Definitely. <laughs> I mean, that's just like if you work at McDonald's, you don't know if the girl's um, fries is busting open at the strip club that weekend. <laughs> right. You know? She's selling feet pics on, <laughs> on Wednesdays. We don't know that. You don't know. Right. <laughs> but, you know, but a lot of times in the industry, you have an inkling. Mm -hmm. And I always people always ask me, like, oh, you be at Jamie Foxx's crib and, mm -hmm. and Diddy's crib and all these parties and stuff like that. Like, how come you ain't never got caught up? I'm like, because I know when to leave. Mm. I know when to be like, uh, yo, I'm about to be out. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see y'all later, yo. Did you leave me? Yeah, that vibe dude. is off for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, and it's also what are you going to the parties for? Mm -hmm. Are you going there to party and, and, and network or are you do come in for more mm -hmm. and so i'm only coming to network and party right and find checks that's it you know, find that's checks it. and then and he's been good at it too yeah yeah it's a blessing <laughs> man so it's it's weird you know we a lot of stuff going on right now in the mm -hmm. industry yeah but uh <sighs> That's it. That's <laughs> We're gonna leave it, it right there. It's not this. It. Well, I don't do clickbait interviews. I just wanted people to understand that yeah. there's a separate, separate of church and state. We just put it like that. Yeah, you know, you don't uh, have to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You, you know, you can if you want to, mm -hmm. but that comes with repercussions, mm. and I don't want any repercussions. Got you. I want to be known for my work mm -hmm. and my my being a stand up dude. Right. Some people think that if you don't go to the after party, like you're talking mm -hmm. about, you can't hit that next level. And that seems to not be the case. No, nah, it's not that you can't hit that next level. You might not get there as quick, mm. you know, and it's not even going to the after party. It's going to the, the party after the after party. <laughs> <laughs> the after, right. after, after party going Got upstairs, you know, or you. going through that door. Uh, you might not get there quicker. Mm hmm. It, as if you do, but then you got to wake up the next morning and look at yourself in the mirror. Be right. like, Dang, what uh, did uh, I just do? What did I just let do, get done to me? Mm. You know, and I don't want to have that that situation. Yeah. I don't want to not be able to look at myself and appreciate myself. So I'd rather it take a little longer. There you go, man. I, I'd rather be able to sleep good at night and wake up okay in the morning. Word is bond. I feel you. All right, and that's it, man. Dennis, L.A. White in the building. Don't forget the L.A. Make sure you check him out on Netflix right now. Tap in with him on all social platforms, too. What's your social yeah. media, homie? Dennis, L.A. White on, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say, say uh, X on Twitter, right. <laughs> yeah. uh, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram. My website is at like, you know, dot org. I have a dope um, workshop coming up next week. OK, um, it's a two day workshop virtual. So if you're anywhere in the country, in the world, you can you can sign up for it. It's at like, you know, dot org. Register and uh, come get this work. And, and you can find me. Follow me. I follow back.
There you go. We got Dennis L.A. White. We got to ask you this for the people. Uh, he's he's the man on Family Business on Netflix. He's been on all types of platforms. Was the first black host on Fuse, and uh, he's 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 brought out pretty much every artist all across the country. He's traveled the world. So we got to ask you this because on our Sunday show, you know, we got to do our Sunday dinner pick. So you've been in the A. You've been frequent in the A. What's your favorite place to eat here in the A that you would say, hey, you you need to go there too. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. There's a lot of great places to eat here in A. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> I loved, I don't know if, it's, if I'm if I'm a nervous saying this, but I love the Marietta Diner. Okay. Okay. Um, because, that's a great pick. Yeah. Cause I like the Greek food. Mm-hmm. I, I like the array of food. The service is good and, and it's quality. Yeah. And it's, it's a dope atmosphere. And then they got that big cake stand in the front. Oh man. My mom comes here and <laughs> goes busy with the red velvet. <laughs> All right. See, that's my pick too. Okay. Hit the hype bell for moms with the red velvet. That's what's up, man. Dennis LA white. Appreciate you pulling up on us. Oh, big dog. Man. For sure, man. Good luck with everything. We're going to get back to the music on the music side. On the video side, we got another special guest pulling up on us soon. Y'all get ready, man. It's Reshow Media Campus West. We gone. It's time to see who's with Reese. Who you with?